All right, we'll just start in a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna wash my glasses. And then we'll begin. Okay, let me open the page. Let's call it. Okay, let's see which screen you guys can see. <clears throat> um, share. Okay, hopefully, um, if anybody can't hear or if you can't see the screen and me, um, then you'll let me know. Um, okay, um, I'm Neil Kummer, I'm the CEO. Um, started this business in 1979, a year after making Aliyah. And um, for the first 15 years, it was pretty much um, importing appliances because appliances were the big deal then. Um, there were uh, there were taxes of a couple hundred percent on appliances and um, and there wasn't much available in Israel. So we were bringing in a lot of American appliances and uh, then the taxes uh, took a big dive down and went down to where they currently are, which is about 17%. So it was not such a big deal that um, that uh, 
uh, that to bring in uh, appliances. There's still, I'll go through this later, um, there's still advantages to certain kinds of appliances if you want big American appliances or if you already own appliances that you want to bring in. There are certain appliances that are worthwhile still bringing in and using them even with transformers. There are others that are certainly not worthwhile, and I'll go through that in detail as well. Um, again, if you have any, there's a place to write questions and uh, feel free. I'm, I, I don't mind being uh, interrupted because I'll, I'll kind of circle around because there's a lot of information. So I'm not going to um, stick to a simple um, like linear thing. I'll, I'll circle around and hit the same material a few times. OK, um, most shipments come in things what these things are these are uh shipping containers this is a 40 foot shipping container you can see the what it looks like compared to a big truck it's quite long it holds like a three to four bedroom house maybe even more depending on how much other stuff you have uh can everybody hear me okay if you can't like please let me know okay um and um there's also a smaller, there's smaller containers, which are these, these are 20 foot containers that holds, let's say two to three bedrooms. And um, the advantage of shipping in a container, like everything ships in the container eventually, but the specific advantage uh, is that these things are sealed um, either at your house, if it's, if you have an exclusive container or they're sealed at the warehouse, if you have what's called a consolidated, a less than container load that you're sharing with other people. Um, those Then those are sealed at the port uh, before they go down to the boat. And then they're opened up. Um, uh, if it's a shared container, they're opened up at the port uh, on the arrival side. Uh, if it's an exclusive container, then in except for the fairly rare case of uh, customs inspection, um, in, unless you come out of LA, in which there's the, the case there's security inspections for some reason, um, then those also those are sealed at your house. This thing has a has a big lock on it and a, like a wax seal with a number on it, and um, and that same seal is is sealed at your house is at origin and it's opened at your destination. And then the stuff is emptied out and brought into your house. So it's pretty hard for stuff to go missing. Um, but, and it's also um, uh, because the stuff is not generally opened up or moved around unless there's an inspection, then it's also quite uh, secure in terms of uh, packing because, um, because things are not moved around and taken out and put somewhere else as they are when you when you ship in a smaller shipment like this then although these are quite secure this is a um this is a, what's called a lift fan uh which is a um a crate and they have various sizes and this is called a pallet which is the the, the lower portion of this thing and then just like in in some of the airports they have this uh, dark plastic that seals it around and keeps it from moving so these are also quite um, well packed. Um, actually, I'm, and I'm from time to time, I'm going to make mention of some, some of the tricks in not in a positive sense um, that some of our competitors, uh, colleagues, competitors, whatever, use to reduce prices. And, uh, and this is one of them. Um, there, there is a shipping company that even if you have enough for your own exclusive container, they'll share your container with other people and they'll put a bunch of um of these kinds of things in it but they won't even uh pack them up in this sort of uh highly protective thing they'll just sort of load them in and they can have they even do uh like usa shipping they call it or something it's my usa where uh they're like a mail service where they can put like tens of different um shipments into the same shipment and so that's a trick that um, even though the price per cubic foot is going to be lower, the incidence of loss or theft is going to be much higher. So you don't want anybody uh, selling you a container load of stuff 
combining with other people's stuff. That's that's just um, misguided. Um, and the other thing that some of the, even some of the people who are almost as old as we are in this business do, um, we discovered because we were providing clearing and delivery services for them, was they would just not tell people that they were sharing their container with somebody else. And they said, oh, you know, just deliver this uh, first to this to this guy and then go up and, and deliver the rest of it to the other guy. So they weren't telling people. They were selling them an exclusive container and then, um, uh, in fact, uh, sharing it with other people. So the bottom line is if there's if there if pricing is low, uh, exceptionally lower than our pricing or other, you know, kind of uh, mid-range pricing, then there's there's usually a trick. Another one of the tricks is that one of the companies um, doesn't actually have an office, um, much of an office in Israel. They sort of just uh, take all their money in America and who knows where and if they pay taxes, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. I don't want to besmirch them, but uh, they're very friendly and very flexible because they make such, they don't pay taxes, so they make a ton of money. Um, okay. so. Um, Anyways, that was, those are some of the, the tricks uh, that some of the other folks are into. Um, what we're going to, um, what, what I'm going to go through in this presentation is uh, telling you like what you can hope for from a reliable shipper. The main thing you can hope for from us is a clear statement of all the um, predictable prices. Uh, a predictable cost, as well as a clear statement of the possible surprises. If there is going to, maybe you're going to be moving to the third floor and there, the elevator isn't going to fit everything, or the, um, there's overhanging trees and you have an exclusive container, so you can't bring a container in, or you're moving to Nakhlaot or the old city in Spot. And there's no way you can get a container in there into the old city of Jerusalem. So then you have to use what's called a shuttle. Uh, usually we know about that stuff in advance and we do our best to push gently um, to get as much information as we possibly can so that there are as few as possible uh, surprises on down, the, on down the way. Still in all, there are things, um, as I mentioned, out of LA, there's a high incidence of um shipments that are that are inspected for security reasons for some unknown reason and uh which almost doesn't happen anywhere else in america or canada and uh there are uh there is some incidence of uh inspections at, in israel but mostly that's for returning residents and for exceptional things like if somebody makes the mistake doesn't follow our advice and puts in um, a s electric scooter or an electric bike, or um, uh, or we have some people once in a while who try to save a lot of money by doing their own packing, and then and then making their own customs clearing list. Uh, and if it's not perfectly apparently professional, then that's a red flag. We once had a guy who decided he was going to do his own shipment, and he packed his own stuff, and he wrote piano on his uh, customs clearing. But it turns out that uh, they somehow intuitive or, or x-ray, I don't remember which, they figured out that he had like 12 pianos because he was, he was a uh, piano restorer. So they didn't embarrass him too much, but they did make him open a business and get a business license and import the things legitimately. So uh, that's one of the things that if you, some people decide to do their own packing, that's not a, um, it's not a reasonable decision unless uh, you really know what you're doing. And also it's impossible to ensure stuff if you're doing your own packing um, because uh, it needs to um, uh, it needs to be uh, professionally packed in order to be insured if it's delicate or anything like that for insure. Is every container from LA search? No, not every container, but there is a, you know, it's a, I don't know what the percentages are, whether it's 30% or 40% or 20% 
um, and th there is a kind of a trick to get around it, which is to consolidate with somebody else. So if you have more than one person, you're allowed to do that now. It used to be that if you had more than one person in the container, that you had to empty out the other person's stuff, and then you could deliver your container. But now they allow up to two people in the same container without having to do a, a separation. So that's that. Um, timing is, um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, timing is an issue. But nowadays, it's, we're sort of over the hump of the summer. Um, you know, like the last bunches of, sh of containers are arriving and s still being packed up. But um, that, that means that you're much more likely to get accurate timing unless there's a COVID uh, situation as there has been recently. There was a, a boat that was scheduled to go and it, it had, um, there was COVID on the vessel. So they just uh, canceled the sailing, which of course messed up all the, uh, the other sailings down the line. And uh, so that happens and that actually incurred some additional costs for our customers. Um, but uh, in terms of when to wait, when to do your shipment, when to start planning, the present is always the best time to start planning. And even if it means just making a list of or several lists, like your A list, your B list, your C list, your absolutely do not ship list of things that you want to bring or don't want to bring. So that it's, it's never too early to start that. And, uh, and we're always going to have people who are going to uh, wait for the last possible minute and say, we need this stuff picked up uh, within the coming week. And we'll manage to accommodate them somehow. Um, but it's not ideal. The ideal thing is a couple of months before, we either do an on-site uh, or these days, mostly it's by video, um, uh, a video uh, um, recording of what's the, um, of what it is you're thinking of bringing. And that's how we get um, a volume estimate. And based on that volume estimate, um, that's how we were able to um, uh, to quote you. Usually, it's there's a minimum. Uh, below that minimum, the price could go up per cubic foot per volume, and above that minimum, the price could go down per uh, per volume. So it's there's always going to be um, there's always going to be a benefits for shipping more, and in general, also there's a benefit for shipping an exclusive container because you have that much more space to play around with. If you're trying to fit a certain number of goods into a limited space like this, and they're not perfectly regularly shaped uh, and sized, then it's gonna be hard to maximize the space. Whereas if you have a big space to play around with, then it's gonna be a lot easier to maximize the, um, the use of the space. And so you're gonna both be paying a lower rate per cubic foot and you're going to be um, uh, maximizing the space. You're going to be getting that advantage. Also, uh, because when, you, when stuff is packed in your own exclusive container, there's no need for palletizing everything or for crating everything. Uh, although we do still pretty much insist on creating super delicate things or super valuable things. So you're saving three different ways by shipping a container. Uh, and you're also getting more efficient timing. One is uh, you're paying a lower rate per cubic foot, significantly lower. Second is you're getting more efficient packing um, and use of space that, than you would in a consolidation in a, in a combined shipment. And uh, third is you're not wasting the space of creating or palletizing everything. So there's significant um, economies of scale for shipping an exclusive container. Um, still, there's it usually the breakoff point is five to seven hundred cubic feet for a for a twenty footer, and as as to when it pays to go to a container rather than a consolidation. <clears throat> there are advantages to smaller shipments, which are if you if you don't need your stuff in a hurry, uh, or if you absolutely do not want your stuff soon, um, then um, shipping in a consolidation is going to be slower. Um, and it's going to be less certain. So if you just kind of want to want your stuff to come when it comes and, uh, and not worry about it um, and being able, being able to store it cheaply at the port. So, um, 
So a, a, a less than container load is going to be a possible choice uh, because these things, as I mentioned, when they arrive, there everything is in a container, right? But when when these kinds of shipments arrive in a consolidation, meaning there's like 10, 15, whatever the number is, into a into a container, then when they hit the port in Israel, there the container is unloaded and these things are put into the warehouse at the port which is okay and it's also uh gives you 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 get 28 days free storage so it's more than okay um and also because they're they're um so well packed uh in other words like these this is like sealed from dust and moisture so the uh, even though the conditions of the port are not ideal for storage normally because these things are so well packed, they're, they're pretty uh, secure. Whereas if you ship a container, let's say this is your exclusive container, so things are not packed um, on pallets and not packed in crates except for really delicate stuff. And let's say your house is not going to be ready for another two months. So you'll be tempted to say, oh, let's just dump this container out at the port. Uh, and we'll get our 28 days of free storage and we'll and we'll pay cheap rates after that. So that's not going to be the best idea because the stuff that, that's in your exclusive container is packed uh, not for being exposed to the um, to the um, elements of dust and uh, and moisture which are at the port. So you don't want to do that. What you if you what you might choose to do is to uh, clear the shipment through customs and then bring it over. We have warehouses which are uh, filled with uh, containers. So we simply take this container and we bring it over to a storage container and we empty it into there carefully. And then when the time comes to deliver the uh, your shipment, we just simply take that storage container. Um, the other advantage of doing that is that these containers, even though it's your exclusive container, uh, in in general, you don't you're not sharing it with anybody unless it's with your permission. Um, the container doesn't actually belong to you. You're just renting it, and after a certain amount of time, usually a week or so, um, they start charging um, uh, what's called demerage, like storage for the container. So you don't want to hold on to this container longer than you have to. And um, and you do want to plan uh, your storage uh, as early as possible. Like there are instances where people will decide to store their goods in America or in Canada uh, before shipping, and then just ship it over when they're ready. Because this the actual sailing of the vessel is only these days about 22 days, and um, so you can just leave that in storage until you're ready, and then ship it over. That does incur additional cost because it's, as we mentioned on the Israel side, if you uh, have difficult access or the truck can't come uh, you know, close to your, your uh, place, um, then you would use a shuttle. So similarly, um, whereas in most places, except for like the you know, Upper East Side of Manhattan or way out in the country, the container is able to pull up right to your door and, and be loaded and sealed. In some places, like in parts of Manhattan and, and outside in the country, um, it might not be feasible to bring the container there. So, uh, or if you were deciding on storage, so that people would, would opt to have a shuttle. So we would use moving trucks to move all of your stuff um, to our warehouse. And then when you're ready, we would put it into a container and send it out. Um, in general, uh, in terms of timing, these this size of container, the 20 foot container, uh, usually that's done in one day, like you know two to five people packing it up in one day and loading it the same day at, after it's all packed up. And a 40 foot container, the double this size, is usually done in two days, sometimes even longer than that if it's a lot of uh, special packing. Um, the um, um, yeah, so that's timing. And then, as I said, if it's uh, packed at your door, it goes straight from there to the port, unless there's some sort of uh, uh, difficulties in, uh, as there have been in recent days uh, because of COVID. Um, then it goes straight to the port, straight onto a vessel, uh, straight off the vessel into the port warehouse, cleared 
within a week or so and delivered also. And then they, they bring this to your house and then they unload it. They take away all the gross debris. They unload and uh, reassemble all the simple stuff that was disassembled. Um, if for an extra charge, if you want, we can also do more sophisticated carpentry and reassembly. But uh, the default is that we just do um, reassemble the simple stuff uh, because the, our delivery people are not carpenters. We can get carpenters for you. We can also, some people have hundreds literally of boxes and it takes them months to unload everything. So uh, we can actually send people afterwards also an additional cost uh, to pick up all the boxes later on. In terms of, um, let's see, marine insurance, um, you have after delivery, you have 45 days uh, within which to make a claim and another 90 days within which to document the claim. So you have quite a lot of time. That doesn't mean you should put it off. It just means that, um, that you have enough time to, to do it. Um, if there's, if it's a claim above $5,000, usually they assign a professional surveyor to come out and write everything up. Otherwise, it's usually up to you and we, we're happy to help um, to uh, get you repair estimates or replacement estimates. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if it's, if in order to insure things, they need to be professionally packed, sorry, to insure things for breakage, not just for loss, they need to be professionally packed. And even if you pack some of your own stuff, like if you pack your own uh, books and clothes, if you want those to be insured for your damage or water damage or whatever, then what you would do is simply leave those open and then we would seal them and then mark them uh, carrier packed rather than packed by owner, thereby enabling you to have um, uh, um, full um, uh, full damage insurance, not just for uh, loss and theft. Uh, there's two basic kinds of insurance. I don't think I have a slide for this, but there's one which we've only been able to offer the last few years, which is a really good one because the rate is 25% lower and it covers everything without your having to make a list of everything. Uh, whereas the old fashioned kind that we used to have to have, we had to make a list of everything in the shipment or you had to make it. And uh, if something was forgotten or if the valuation was inappropriate, then it was either underinsured or overinsured. Whereas now, if you just do this called lump sum, they insure everything for a minimum of $12. You can choose to insure for more per pound. And uh, then everything is insured. Every item is insured for up to $3,000 without your having to break it down or guess at the value or even remember what's there. Um, if there's things that are going to be insured for more than $3,000 a piece or a set, um, then you would, um, you would make that on a separate list and insure that separately. Um, and of course, things, if things are of exceptionally high value, you probably want to document uh, what they are before you even ship them with photographs and with um, previous insurance policies or with invoices. Um, are the, the insurance company that we use, we've been using, they're based in LA. We've been using them for over 35 years and they're very responsive um, and uh, we have good communications and it's uh, and we're happy, as I said, to intervene because um, they're nowadays they use what's called a portal um, for taking claims, um, which means that you submit everything onto a website and and it's all kind of automated. But some people, of course, are allergic to those kinds of things, and we're happy to um, to help you with that stuff and to also to help you get uh, repair estimates. Uh, remember that uh, the ins marine insurance is for replacement value at destination. So if you were to be shipping something from America to Israel, usually, and we have a, uh, uh, a chart of multiples, usually things in America cost uh, about one over two and a quarter. In other words, things in Israel cost about two and a quarter times more than things in America. That applies to furniture, appliances, it could even be more than that. Um, uh, books, uh, Sifre Kodesh could be one, not no multiple at all. Uh, ritual or art objects could be one and a half. So we have the recommended multiples, but again, all of that is uh, is something that you really don't need to even think about. 
in except for really high value stuff if you're doing lump sum so and you're paying like 1.88 percent instead of 2.5 percent so you're getting a discount uh, a 25 percent discount and you're getting um, much more comprehensive coverage without having to worry about um, uh, uh, whether you've forgotten stuff or gotten the correct value. I covered this already, but I'll mention it again, storage. Um, if you have a small shipment, you get free storage in Israel, and that's okay because you, your stuff is, is highly packed, but that's not okay if you're using one of the competitors that is very inexpensive because they're not gonna pack the even the smaller shipments uh, in in these kind of um, high security things like crates and uh, things so that not only are things going to be exposed to diesel dust and moisture, but they're going to have a much higher incidence of loss and theft. Um, a full container is very expensive just to leave at the port, although people have done that, paying thousands of dollars for a couple of months. Um, so in general, unless you absolutely do not want your stuff handled more than once, in general, then we move that to a, a storage container uh, and then deliver in the storage container. Um, why, are, why are consolidated shipments slower? Um, because on both sides of the ocean, they're combining with several other shipments into the container. And whereas in the summer, where there's quite a, a big flow of, uh, of shipments to fill the containers, uh, off season, it's slower, so they'll, wait until the container is at least 80% full before they ship it out. And then on the Israel side, they'll, they'll, um, they'll uh, empty it out right away. But then if, it's, if you have a small shipment, then also um, it's gonna, it may take a while, you know, a week or two to get the, uh, the stuff delivered because you're waiting to fill up a, tr a truck into a, um, um, in, a, in an efficient way. Uh, volume estimates. So uh, I mentioned that there's usually, in the old days, it was on site. Nowadays, it's mostly by video, which is a good thing if you can record it, because then you can, you know, it's no he said, she said about whether I said I wanted to ship that or not. Uh, the things that make those accurate, we have we have a lot of documentation and about all this stuff, so you can look on our website. Um, but the things that make uh, the volume estimates accurate is if you make lists beforehand. In other words, you say what your A list is, your B list, your C list. And um, also if your stuff is well organized and even maybe uh, segregated into, sec into areas that this is going, that's not going. Um, and that's, that's also something that you wanna do in general because you don't want um, to have your passports left out as happens every once in a while, somebody's passports get shipped or um, so you want to have things well organized as much as possible beforehand, and you want to have lists made up uh, beforehand also, so that um, so that you know uh, what it is that you you uh, want to ship. Um, let's see what else can I talk to you about? Um, oh, I was talking about uh, so uh, like uh, rights. So what stuff can you bring in tax free? Pretty much everything. Um, you can uh, only one of each appliance, except for three TVs and three computers. If you wanted to bring more than that, um, it, the value of them of the extra ones is quite low. So you would be paying very little. Let's say thirty percent on fifty dollars or something. So it's not a big deal. You could bring in food or whiskey and stuff. It's just, as long as it's not like a commercial quantity and that it's not like it's um, there's a lot of attention drawn to it on the list. Uh, you're allowed to bring in a gas grill, but only one per family. And there is uh, about $300. Uh, I think somebody in the government got into the gas grill uh, business and made it uh, prohibitive to, uh, well, not prohibitive, still worthwhile for high-end Webers, but they made it more difficult, just like they used to do that for carpets when, uh, when one of the ministers was the importer of carpets or the manufacturer of carpets. Um, so Ale, Olim, new immigrants, and also uh, Katin Joser, miners who grew up here and then left, 
um, can bring in three custom free shipments within three years. They don't have to come from your country of origin. So if you decided you wanted a bunch of high-end appliances from, from Europe, you could do a shipment of that. And then you could do other couple of shipments of furniture. In general, what's worth bringing is high quality stuff or stuff that you're sentimentally attached to um, or that you value for other reasons. Um, there's a question about cars. I'll, actually, there's a whole slide about that. Um, whether it's worthwhile bringing a car. And there, the answer is that sometimes it's very worthwhile. Um, uh, and sometimes it's not. You just have to do the math. We can give you the figures of what it costs to ship. And there's also quite a, a heavy procedural process, uh, which which we charge for. So you don't doesn't fall on your shoulders. Although, and if you want to do it, you can uh, you could have it done. Uh, you could do it and and also uh, save money that way. Um, there are um, in general the the deal the. The, the clever thing to do is to bring in a used car because uh, they depreciate very quickly. The first year, they're already depreciated 20% and then 10% each year subsequent. So if, if you're bringing in a three-year-old car, um, you're already uh, depreciated 40% from the um, uh, from the value. So you're paying, and you're also paying a lower rate to begin with, whereas an Israeli pays 125%, you're paying only 75% and you're paying it on a greatly depreciated value. So that's a, a way in which um, it's worthwhile bringing. There are also some vehicles that are simply not so available here, like uh, vans and Toyota vans and Honda vans. So that's a reason to bring those in. It's very hard to find them. The only way you could buy a tax-reduced vehicle here otherwise is to have somebody who brought one in and decided they don't want it, either because they're going back or they don't want a car anymore. So that's uh, not so likely. Uh, in general, if you have uh, an American washer dryer, you're not going to want to bring that. If you have a fancy American fridge or an oven, uh, especially if it's like a, not an old oven, but a new oven uh, or a good fridge, those could be used with transformers and, could, and can be adapted for use in Israel. Um, there are excellent high-end, not cheap, um, washer dryers, uh, Speed Queen, which are very big and very fast uh, compared to the European machines, which are relatively smaller, although there are some big ones now, and they're but they're considerably quicker. In other words, 20 to 40 minutes versus 40 to 60 minutes for the European machines, which usually mostly use heat and they're front-loading rather than the American machines, which use agitation. Um, small appliances, if you use, if you already have high-end American appliances like KitchenAid or um, um, or a Vitamix um, that are 110, then it's it's worthwhile bringing those and using a transformer. A transformer is, is a big, heavy thing. It's not a, li a light little thing. Um, it's a big, heavy thing. And it so you could use that. You would have like a garage in your, um, what do they call it, a kitchen garage where you keep the transformer. Or like we do, we just carry it up if we need a, if we want to use the old KitchenAid. Um, but it's that's probably worthwhile. Um, things like other European appliances, uh, if you have any any heating devices, uh, heaters or toaster ovens or popcorn makers or anything like that, that stuff all that you do not want to use in a transformer in general. You want to uh, just buy them in Israel. The prices are, you can go on zap.co.il and you can find what the prices are. In general, they're worthwhile buying in Israel. Um, and you can do, Zap helps you with comparative shopping. Um, furniture, again, if you have high quality stuff, stuff that you like, it's worth bringing. Uh, don't ship stuff that you don't like or that you think is, you know, if, also like if you're shipping Ikea stuff, don't expect it to, um, you're not going to reassemble it. You're going to probably ship it as is unless it's already disassembled. And, but Ikea stuff is all, is considerably more expensive here to buy. So if you were going to buy a bunch of Ikea and ship it as is, and then assemble it here, that's worthwhile. But it's not so worthwhile unless you have a ton of space in your shipment to uh, bring over some uh, mid-range or lower-range IKEA stuff um, and think you're going to disassemble it and reassemble it because it's press board, so it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to that. There are IKEA stuff. There is IKEA stuff that's um, that's higher end, 
which which is uh, solid wood or or um, what's it called? Um, you know those uh, layers, uh, plywood, which are which are high quality and can be reassembled. Um, let's see, packing. Um, in general, our services and everybody else's services, unless you do your own packing, are full packing and materials, and packing and materials continually get better. Um, we can also deliver stuff if you want to do your own packing of, um, of non-delicates like uh, books and clothes if you want to organize them in your own way. But then again, um, you'd want to leave them opened uh, so that we can seal them so they won't be marked packed by owner and they'll be marked carrier packed and that way we can insure them for all risks, not just for loss or damage. Um, okay, this stuff you already know that FCL full containers go directly to the port unless you're using a shuttle and putting stuff into storage. And it's more predictable because it goes usually right to the boat and right on the boat and the boat comes over. And uh, the LCLs usually go to the, the warehouse, but during the summer, they, they, they're much more predictable and, uh, and short. Um, during the winter time, they might take longer to load in. Obviously, if you're out in LA or Houston or wherever, it's going to be a longer time to get your uh, stuff off. It's going to add a few weeks. Um, I mentioned uh, something I didn't mention yet is about storage, uh, extending storage. Like you're allowed with storage, you're allowed to um, uh, you're allowed to put things into storage partially. So if you wanted to ship part and store part, or if you wanted to deliver part of your shipment and store the rest of it, you can do that. And you can even extend your marine insurance uh, indefinitely, even for years, as long as uh, we control access. If if you have access, obviously, then we're not going to be able to guarantee that you know, like extend the insurance. But if we uh, main, if we maintain control over the access to this your storage units, then uh, we you can just extend it for as long as you want. Whereas if you if you have your own control over your, where you're storing stuff or part of your stuff in Israel then um, you, it's just as if you've taken delivery and you have only 45 days within which to make a claim. So that's, you have to be aware of that. Um, and we have a lot of um, more and more, we're starting to get um, video uh, recommendations. Which I have to learn how to edit videos now so that we can put those up. Uh, we have a lot, we have a testimonials page that we're very proud of. Um, over the years, we seem to get more of those. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, custom clearing, uh, as with our whole system, our whole system is that we try to get you to give us as much information as you have as early as possible, because that's going to uh, help avoid surprises. And it's going to help us clear your shipment as quickly as possible. Even we begin the clearing process even before it arrives in Israel, it arrives in the territorial waters even. And um, and also to deal with in, in advance of any uh, questionable issues, we had um, we had some folks recently that uh, wanted to bring in a whole bunch of um, gas um, um, gas um, garden equipment, which is tricky. Like you'd have to, if, in order to bring that in legitimately, you'd have to get a standards institute for everything which would be a hassle. Um, and uh, so we do try to get everything um, squared away as early as possible to avoid any delays, to avoid any storage um, uh, issues or, or uh, surprising taxes or surprising inspections. We try to tell you exactly what to, what not to pack, what, and um, what not to draw attention to. During delivery, um, uh, the goods are unwrapped, furniture, not the new furniture, because usually that you want to have somebody who's going to be assembling it. We can do that, but it's not standard. Uh, we put goods where you want them. We'll reassemble any simple use furniture that was disassembled at origin. Usually that's like tables and chairs or things where you put, not, not chairs, um, tables and beds, or where you're putting one thing on top of another. Um, things that might lend themselves to extra costs, as I mentioned, difficult access. If you're, some of the roads in Israel can be, you can barely get a bicycle through, let alone a, a shipping container. Um, some of the um, elevators are old and small 
as can be some of the stairwells. So if your you know grandma's um, um, a china closet might not fit up there, so you use a crane. There are two kinds of cranes. There's a big arm crane, which can go you know many 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 stories high, and there's um, and there's also these uh, more recent things called ladder cranes, which have a platform and are, they're much less expensive and much less wear and tear on um, your stairs and your elevator and your stuff and your and your psyche. So those are uh, usually, I think they're a, a bargain, um, those things. And so it's always good to use them when you can. Other kinds of difficult access are if you have a container and your parking, your parking lot is above another parking lot so they usually limit it to a certain number of tons, so you wouldn't be able to park the the the, um, the container truck there. So you'd have to ch do a shuttle there. Uh, and again, all this stuff, we we uh, as soon as we get your address, we look at we look it up on Google and try to decide whether um, we think there's a reasonable or possibility of you requiring a shuttle, or that there might be difficult access. We try to do that all as soon as possible um discounts we're always happy to try to um you know uh, help you interpret your competing quotes and uh refer give you referral fees for other um for if you refer people to us um everybody here is our former north americans all of our uh, not our delivery staff of course but our um all our office staff are all uh, so we we speak your language uh, and your mentality. Uh, this Yael is the head of sales. She's uh, super accommodating. And um, that's her extension number. And this is our this is our address. If you want to reach me for any reason, I'm the same. Um, I'm the same uh, just with Neil and EIL. And let's see if there's I think there's another question here. Uh, is Toshav Rosera exempt from customs? Employee? Yes, uh, sorry, I didn't say that earlier. Um, Toshav Rosera are exempt from uh, from all the taxes. Uh, ex the only thing that they're uh, not exempt from is uh, they can bring in a car. A, a regular Israeli can bring in a car up to uh, two years old, and a, a Toshav Rosera can bring in a car up to four years old. Um, there's also a um, something called a collector car, but that's only cars that are over 30 years old, and you can only drive them during daylight and not on weekends. Um, but in general, uh, the Toshav Choser has all the exemptions um, that a uh, that a, that a Ole or a, or a Katin Choser has. And I will send uh, participants a copy of this presentation. Um, and uh, although it might be ready immediately, but I will send it. And uh, and you can still ship items to the warehouse. Yes. Um, in other words, let's say you want to um, let's say you're having stuff picked up at your house, but you want also to buy you're buying a bunch of new appliances or new furniture or whatever, and you're going to be gathering that together for weeks or months beforehand. So we can uh, or days, whatever. Uh, so we can uh, get all that stuff. You'll you'll let us know what to expect and when. Uh, so we're not surprised, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, gather all that stuff if we need to pack it if if, if it requires repacking, um, and um, and then we'll add that when let's say if you have a container, um, then when the container is ready, we'll um, uh, we'll pack that stuff in the container first, and then um, go to your house with the container and load the rest of it. Uh, another option is to have the stuff delivered to your house and then to just load it all there. The downside of that is they, you might find difficulty getting uh, some tax uh, issues handled if it's delivered to your house. Um, yeah, and it's also inconvenient to have your house uh, filled with all sorts of new stuff that you have no nothing to do with. Um, uh, yeah, but that's it's very important because like um, that we know what to expect and when, and um, and that we that we get confirmations of delivery because uh, 
if some like if we once had a thing where FedEx said somebody was getting a uh, like a weird unusual kind of thing which is an underwater treadmill and FedEx said oh yeah we delivered it and um but then and so based on that the customer said go ahead and ship the rest of the shipment and of course months later it was it, by the time they stored it and delivered it the thing was missing and FedEx said well we delivered it but guess guess where they delivered it to we don't know they never delivered it to the warehouse and it was signed for by who knows who so it's that's a tricky thing yeah that's why it's so important to um uh if you're having stuff delivered in advance to really check uh and make sure not just with the fedex receipt but check with our um with our warehouse to make sure that the stuff is actually there um all examples you gave were for shipping from usa shipping from canada is is really quite similar um uh, it's um the um, the main difference is we just say a a lot and i'm just kidding my wife is from canada so um but um uh there there is no uh real substantial difference um if you're if you're in toronto um there's uh, access for containers there's consolidations for less than full containers um the insurance is the same the multiples are very similar so there's not a lot of um there's not a lot of difference uh, and um is there an extra cost for double loading so that's a that's a good question double loading um it, there would not be there's a there's a cost for receiving things like if you have let's say you're delivering i don't know 20 things to our warehouse before uh you're ready to have your stuff picked up so there are costs per item or groups of items to have them delivered not not per, exorbitant and um but there's no extra cost for loading them because they're going to would have had to been loaded anyways if you're if they were uh going to be picked up at your house there is um there, it reminds me that if you if you have let's say more than one delivery sometimes people have three deliveries you know the in-laws and the outlaws and the who knows who um, so um so then you have to coordinate a bit better you have to um you know first in last out kind of thing uh so you have to know which is going to be delivered first and you have to plan for that um you know planning is what um is what eliminates the surprise costs and um so if if you just slap everything into the shipment all at once and then uh, uh you know when you get to israel you unload it all on the sidewalk and decide this is going there and that's going there so that is going to incur extra charges uh for sorting and for delays and so you know and the same thing on the on the origin side um if they get to your house and it's like a big balagan and um and you you decided that that's when you're going to start deciding what's going and, and you're starting to sort stuff and um and uh and you're listening to the truckers and they say oh there's room for everything and so that kind of stuff is where uh, problems can happen. So you you do not want to rely on uh, last minute sorting, and you also don't want to rely on uh, the advice of the of the truckers as to what's going to fit. You know, oh, he said everything was going to fit. Like, no, 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 no. You plan it in advance, and you make reasonable efforts to get our advanced expertise. You do not want some. Uh, are however nice they are or not nice or whatever you don't want to base your decisions about what's going in the shipment on what the guy says is going to fit you want to base it on early deliberate uh calculations as much as possible uh, so i think that answers about double loading uh canada we still ship items and sealed there yes and also uh, you can certainly even ship items to the warehouse even if you're not going to uh, be using a container. You can just have stuff shipped and then when everything is there, we can ship it. There's also something I didn't mention, um, which is for a really tiny shipments, um, there's something like this, a pallet, this um, where you get something about that size, maybe a little bit bigger, and you just can, you can put like that's the size of an American washer or it's let's say it's 35 cubic feet, which means uh, 20, 
small book boxes or so. Um, and that is quite a, a bargain in that it's $1,000 or a little bit less to get from our warehouse in New Jersey, when we also have it, I think, in Miami, uh, to your home. To the, to, uh, but in, unlike most shipments, all of our shipments, really, uh, which include delivery into the house, um, this $1,000 special um, just goes to your um, sidewalk. Um, but it's quite a, a bargain and there's no packing. It's just like you deliver the stuff, we put it on the pallet, we ship it out. So um, that's, a, that's a thing you can do. But as I said, you don't have to ship a whole container in order to have stuff delivered. Uh, and I answered the thing about LA. Um, and if you have any other questions, I'll flip through this presentation, see if there's any stuff that's, um, and uh, this is amazingly not so much not so funny anymore that joke uh packing marine shipping customs clearing delivery discounts contact information uh storage i think we got consolidations why it's more efficient to ship in a container how many different levels of savings there are um full container and uh, usually, ah, so here's something that I can add. Um, um, whereas most everywhere uh, is uh, built, um, the contract is based on a minimum or estimated volume. Um, there are places in the Midwest um, and could be also in the mid, you know, way in the west of Canada where, um, where we use a hundred weight. Like when you do a local move in the United States or Canada, usually the the um, the way to estimate uh, the quantity is by by weight, which is a lot easier to do than estimating volume. Because when you're estimating volume, you're placing a bet on how things are going to fit together. And remember, as I said, that if you're trying to fit things together in a smaller space, it's a lot less likely to maximize that use of that space than if you have a bigger space. So, um, whereas with weight, weight is weight. So it's not, uh, there's not so much of a question. Um, but it, the pattern is the same, meaning that there's usually um, a minimum or estimated volume below which the rate could go up and above which the rate could go down. Um, and, uh, and it's usually placed at such a place that there's no advantage to shipping unless you're going to ship quite a lot less, quite a bit less, then there's no advantage to shipping a bit less. And there's also the, another thing I could mention is that uh, whereas most 20-foot uh, containers are, are pretty full because that's 1,000 cubic feet, two or three bedrooms, um, there's a fair number, a fair percentage of 40-foot containers that are not so full. So in other words, if you have enough to fill a 20-foot container, but maybe you have another 10% or another 20% or 30%. So it's probably going to be worthwhile taking the larger container because you're not paying the, 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 the cost of the container is minimally. Um, uh, it's like the cost of the container, the difference is maybe $1,500 between the cost of the container. The, the, what the costs are, the mo main differences in costs, are the handling, the loading, the packing, the materials, all that stuff, the unloading, uh, and all that stuff. So, uh, whereas um, if you were um, if you were going to ship this plus, let's say a crate like you know like we talked about, that would be probably more expensive than shipping this thing partially full filled. So that's something that you would consider. You'd want to. Uh, get a partially filled container, um, and you're not because you're not paying for the empty space uh, in most every uh, in most every case. You're just paying for the amount that you're using, and so it's it is better if you if you're on the border and you think you might want to add more stuff. It is better to go to a larger container, and because you're not paying substantially more. In general, uh, also like I talked about volume scale, volume of scale. Is that how you say it? Um, that um, 
that uh, discounts at scale that um, if you ship twice as much stuff, it's not going to cost you twice as much. It's going to cost you usually one and a half times as much. So, um, and okay, so uh, that's that's another thing. Uh, what's the minimum for a small lift? So the least, if it's a full pack lift, probably the minimum is about $2,000. Uh, but, and it would cover, um, or maybe a bit less, but figure 2000, it would cover, uh, let's say, uh, two, one and a half of these things, like 200 cubic feet, 150 to 200 cubic feet, $2,000. Whereas uh, here, the minimum for a small lift is $1,000, but you're shipping like a fifth of the, of the stuff for $1,000 and you're getting no packing and no delivery. So this thousand dollar bargain is is really not a bargain if you're if you're considering um, how much you're paying per cubic foot. So again, the um, the more you ship, the the more efficient the packing is. Um, and if you go to a container, then you're not using wasting space with these things, and you're also getting um, rates that are considerably lower than if you do a small shipment. But the answer is, um, in general, like if the, there's no minimum, I mean, there is, there is also like some people will say, oh, we just have like 20 boxes of books we want to ship over. So probably the best thing to do is to go to the uh, the postal service and uh, and get a quote from them if, if that's what, if that's all you're shipping. Um, but also you can get multiple quotes from us. Like you can say, okay, this is my A list. I want to quote for that. This is my A plus B list. I want to quote for that. Um, and um, so you can get a couple of quotes and uh, and then decide based on that, um, you know, which, which you want to go with. Um, okay, I hope I wasn't too quick in giving you all this information and that it sounded more or less organized. Um, this is my first presentation because I had COVID, co Corona, for the last three weeks. I was in the hospital for a day and at home hos home hospitalization after that. So this is exciting to get back into the saddle. This is my first uh, presentation since then. Um, so I wish you all the best. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And again, if you have any, I'll put the last slide up and I will I will make sure that We'll send you as soon as we can a copy of this presentation, as well as a copy of the um, of the PowerPoint. Okay, thanks for your good wishes. Okay, all the best. Take care.